Welcome to Impact Makers Radio, featuring industry thought leaders sharing problem-solving insights to help grow your business and live the life you love. And here's your host, Stuart Andrew Alexander. Hi, and welcome to another Let's Talk Divorce Conversation. And on this segment of the show, I have family law attorney Margaret Held, founder of the Held Law Firm in Knoxville, Tennessee. Now, Margaret, who is certainly considered to be a leader in the area of family law, will be talking to you today about a very interesting topic. Margaret's here to talk to us about what to look for when hiring a family law attorney. Now, that sounds like a really interesting topic, so I can't wait to bring her on the show. So, if you are one of the many divorcing couples in the Knoxville, Tennessee area, you might want to take a break. Log out of Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or anything else you might be doing that may cause a distraction. Pick up a notepad and pen and get ready to take some notes as we listen in to what Margaret has to share. So with that said, let's not keep her waiting any longer. Welcome to the show, Margaret. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. And I know how busy you are over there in Knoxville. So let's just jump straight in with our first question then, Margaret. So if you could, in your own words, just briefly describe the types of people who you serve and the various types of situations they find themselves in when they come to you for your help. Sure. Um We pride ourselves on being a full-service family law firm, kind of the same way you would have a family doctor. So we would be the law firm that you go to first, uh, and we can handle most of your legal needs, and if we can't, we can refer you to a specialist. We do the work that is the most common uh, legal issues faced by families. Uh, specifically divorce, child custody, um, juvenile matters. We also, interestingly, do criminal defense work. Uh, People don't often realize the impact of being charged criminally on uh, a family as well as on the actual defendant. And then we, of course, do elder law work and estate planning uh, as well. Okay, excellent. So keeping in mind that, Margaret, that anything you share with us today is not legal advice or legal assistance. And I'm pretty sure there are many misconceptions out there. However, in the interest of time, could you share what's the most common misconception you come across while you're out there working with divorcing couples? Uh, that's hard to pick. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's plenty uh, of them, right? I, I think <laughs> probably the one I find myself talking the most about is uh, people tend to view divorce as as um, something to grieve. Mm. They view it as as a a moment of sadness and betrayal and a moment to be angry. And, and, and the end of the family and the end of the dreams that they had for their family. And probably my favorite part of the job is, is meeting people in that very negative frame of mind and saying, no, you know, especially if you have children together, you're always going to be a family. What we're going to do instead is we're going to take what obviously is a dysfunctional family and we are going to radically restructure it so that it is going to work better for you, for your ex, uh, and most importantly for your children, on every level, financial, uh, emotional, um, we're, we're not going to view this as the end. We're going to view this as a big reset. And when I explain it to people that way and when they come to understand that the sadness that they're feeling can be replaced certainly by feeling of stress, change is stressful, but that on the other side of that, they're going to come to a much happier, uh, more productive space it's it's really neat. It's really neat to see that transformation. Mm, I, I bet it is. So based on what you just shared with us then, Margaret, and keeping your client's confidentiality in mind, of course, 
share with us an example of how you've helped somebody who came to you with those challenges, with that misconception in mind, and what kind of transformational results you were able to gain for them? I, it really would be impossible uh, to, to pick one. My, my favorite thing that we do is we, and, and this, this story I, I could tell once a week, mm-hmm. um, this, uh, we'll have a client come in and they, they think that they're going to walk out with, with half of, of what they walked into the marriage with. Generally true. But the fun part is, is that when I get to explain to them, yeah, you know, but it'll be the half you, you really kind of didn't want in the first place. So, so you know, half of the clothes in any closet were those derelict clothes that the ex had and that you didn't really want and you wanted the closet space. Or you'll have somebody suddenly realize, you know, I really didn't like that house. I bought that because my wife insisted, and I would rather have a condo on the beach than this five-bedroom house in a subdivision. And... uh we we get right to it. We do that in the initial case assessment, and uh, and just just watch them go. You mean I really can keep the house? I don't have to sell the house. Mm. Um, I really can use my retirement to finance the travel I've always wanted to do and never felt like I could do. Um, without you know reveal you know, the most unique stories actually would require me to reveal client confidentiality sure. and so mm-hmm. I can't but can't do that, but just no. watching that happen over and over and over again is a neat thing fantastic so Margaret, as a reminder, today's topic is what to look for when hiring a family law attorney. Now, with that in mind, and for those divorcing couples who are wanting to know more, they're listening right now. What's the most common but unknown pitfall that they should always remember, no matter what situation they find themselves in, no matter how they feel, no matter how they feel they've been mistreated? Uh, make sure your lawyer's not mistreating you. Right. Um, and and there's, a, there's a few red flags to look for. Um, and, 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 and I would say when you're interviewing your lawyer, you're going to be walking with them through a pretty big change and a pretty stressful time. So look for these flags. The first one, the biggest one that I always see is ask your lawyer if their retainers are refundable. Uh, the number one complaint that I hear from clients all the time is that uh, my lawyer never calls me back. I never know what's going on. I can never seem to get his or her attention. A whole lot of that is being driven by the, the non-refundable retainer. And what that means is you pay that lawyer a lot of money up front, and if they don't have to give it back to you and they can just spend it before they've done any work, what incentive do they have to do the work? Um, at Held Law Firm, we're on a mission to educate the public about make sure that retainer's is refundable. Insist on it. Insist that they account for how they're spending their time and your money. And make sure that you know and you are comfortable with how they are managing your money. Don't let them treat it like it's already theirs before they've earned it. Right, so that's point. one thing, and there's several mm-hmm. others, but I talk a lot, so I'll wait for you. No, please, go ahead. <laughs> share, share, share two more with us, please. Mama. Well, go there's ahead. a this bunch. Um, another is if you're talking to your attorney and they're constantly distracted, that's that moment when they're trying to sell you, right, when they're wanting your business. And if you can't even get their attention because the phone is ringing constantly and staff is running in and out of the office asking them questions, and you're being constantly interrupted while you're pouring your heart out, they're Mm. not an attorney who's worth your time. Make sure that you have their undivided attention. That's the second thing. And the third thing is, do they answer all your questions? Do you feel like you know what's going on when you get done talking to them? Because if if they're going to keep it mysterious, then they're doing it for a reason. The reason is likely that they're trying to rip you off. And then the fourth thing I would say is look around the office. Is it piled high with crap and papers? Is it, on a conversely, is it too clean and too shiny? If it's too clean and too shiny, there ain't a whole lot of work going on. And if there's too many papers piled everywhere, there's not a whole lot getting done. 
So either way, you want your lawyer's office to be just messy enough and not too messy. Awesome. That's something I always say to my partner because she loves to have the house pristine. And I said, baby, come on. I just want to have a place so it looks like somebody lives here. You know, it's not, not a pigsty, but like somebody lives here. It's like something's <laughs> happening, right? So there's yeah. some great insights. Thanks for sharing those with us, Margaret. So, so Margaret, briefly, how many years have you been a family law attorney right now? Been at it for 20 years now. I can hardly believe it. Okay, so it would be safe to say you've handled hundreds of cases, right? Oh, yeah. Actually, I think it's safe to say thousands. Thousands, possibly. Fantastic. So, Margaret, imagine it's a Monday morning and, you know, weekend, you've had a great weekend and it's Monday morning, it's 6, 7 a.m. and the alarm clock goes off and it's time for you to wake up a full day ahead of you with divorcing couples looking to you for your expertise. How do you feel on a day like that, Margaret? Do you st- are you still motivated? Yeah, I do. Um, I think partly when you've been doing it for 20 years, it can actually get a little old, to be honest with you. You see the same problems and the same trends, and it's hard not to get a little burnt out. But something that our law firm's done that has has re-energized us and, and made us very excited is we've started systematically identifying the trends, the problems that every single one of our clients face. And we have started doing um, advocacy campaigns where we are going to our judges and our legislators and our uh, local politicians and saying, and our local psychiatrists and practitioners and other professionals and saying, hey, you know, we're seeing this over and over again. Are you? And we're starting to try to work with our allies in other professions and in our own profession to develop systematic solutions to the com- more common problems our clients are facing. And that's made it exciting for me again to be, to be a part not of just representing individual clients, which is fun, but of, of making a bigger, broader difference that'll, that'll outlast um, just that one individual client's problem. Does that right, make sense? So it's more, more <laughs> of a 360 degree approach for helping your clients then. Absolutely. And in that process of developing those allies, we have discovered uh, just amazing other professionals that we can refer people to. You know, financial planners, psychiatrists, child psychologists, evaluators, forensic accountants, bondsmen, but but not just anybody, people who really are community spirited and quality quality people, um, who who have a sincere motivation, you know, to make our community better, as hokey as it sounds, but uh, but it's it's really been very effective and very energizing. Well, it certainly sounds like you guys are out there making an impact on your local community, which is, yeah, in my eyes, that's what life is all about. Why, why are we here if we're not making a positive impact? On <laughs> Absolutely. People, right? So, Margaret, could you just share briefly a little bit about yourself in terms of your background and your education, as well as your experience as it relates to the topic of family law? Now, I know you've been at this for 20 years and you've done a lot of things. So just briefly sum it up so the listener can just get to know a little bit more about you. Thank you. Well, I'll try to avoid reading my resume. I've I've known (laughs) I've known I wanted to be a lawyer since I was eight. I come right. from a family of lawyers. My great-grandfather was a lawyer. My grandfather was a lawyer. And pretty much every generation is, is going to be a lawyer, and everybody knew it was going to be me. <laughs> okay. And uh, and um, and so um, I, I grew up working in law offices. I put myself through uh, law school, working on a farm, and also... Uh, working at law offices. I've worked in a multitude of law offices before trying this out on my own. Um, That's probably not as interesting as the personal stuff, though. Um, Mm -hmm. I was on welfare all through law school. Um, Mm -hmm. Single mom, raised two kids, uh, couldn't afford daycare, so my daughter went with me to class. Uh, And uh, she's now an adult and thinking about going to law school herself, and I'm like, well, 
should be easy. You've already been through it once when you were in preschool. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, I'm, I'm divorced myself. I'm remarried. I'm a business owner. Um, I, I think that all those experiences combined have really made me mm. understand that just because I got a JD, I ain't nothing special. I'm right. no different or no, no different than the people I represent. And, and I think that's that's made my practice more interesting for me. Well, you you certainly um, walked the talk, so to speak, <laughs> um, twenty odd years in the biz. You certainly have seen a lot, and uh, that that certainly comes through. Your passion certainly comes through. This genuine um, concern for the people who you work with. So I, I just hope that the um, listener listening right now is actually picking up on that and will feel a lot more comfortable to reach out to you if they need help. So, Margaret, I'd like you just for a moment just to picture the kinds of divorcing couples who come to you for your help and they're wanting to know more about hiring a family law attorney, which is our topic today. Now, with that in mind, what final thoughts would you like to impart with them before we move on to our final question for today? Oh, goodness. Um, trust your gut. Uh, if you, you're coming into that office stressed, and if you're just as stressed or even more stressed when you leave that office, keep shopping. Uh, your lawyer should be able to reassure you, uh, p- tell you straight. Don't just tell you what you want to hear, but you should feel much more educated much more in control of the situation than when you walked into that office. And if you don't feel that way, if you still feel overwhelmed and scared and angry, you probably don't have the right lawyer. Anything else, Margaret? Oh, I could go on and on forever, but I bet you got other people to talk to. (laughs) (laughs) I do, I do. But, you know, um, I I just really feel you've got so much more to to share with our listeners. So um, just share one more insight, one more tip before you leave. I hate to say it, but you get what you pay for. Um, Mm -hmm. I always tell my clients, you're going to get good. You've got good lawyers, fast lawyers, and cheap lawyers. And you need, you, only, you need to pick two. So you can have good and cheap, but they're going to be slow as molasses. You can have good and fast, which is what we think we are, but we ain't cheap. Um, for goodness sake, don't do fast and cheap. That never works out in any kind of relationship. Right, exactly. Um, so, so, for example, we charge for our initial case assessment. We do not do um, free consultations, and, and mm-hmm. some clients bucket that. But we're not here. You know those those uh, timeshare speeches where they're like, "Yeah, come have a free cruise. You only have to listen to us sell you a timeshare for two hours." That's right. essentially what a, a free consultation is. When mm-hmm. you come in and you talk to us, we're going to charge you, but we're going to give you your money's worth. And and I think that that is probably how people need to consider this. Do I feel like I'm getting my money's worth out of this out of this professional, out of this lawyer? And uh, and and pay them, pay us what we what we deserve. We work hard. So, Margaret, if there's someone out there who wants to know more, and especially if they're looking to hire a family law attorney, where can they find you? How do they reach out to you? Easy enough. We're on online, like so many others these days. Our uh, web address is www.heldlawfirm.com. And if you would like to talk to me personally, it's hard to get me on the phone. I'm always in court, but you can get me online easy enough. Uh, Just hit the contact us page and we'll get right back with you. Okay. Thanks so much for that, Margaret. Um, For you, the listener, maybe you're out there, you're sat in heavy traffic. I certainly hope that's not the case because that's not a nice experience. (laughs) Or maybe, you know, maybe you're at home sat in and you're tuning in from home or you're out for a walk and you're listening in on your personal device. Whatever the case may be, that is all we have time for today. Once more, that was family law attorney Margaret Held. Thank you so much for sharing so generously with us today, Margaret. You have certainly demonstrated without a doubt that you are a true educator and advocate for your client's success. So thank you. Thank you for the compliment and for having me. 
You are so welcome. And especially with that accent, I just absolutely love it. Tennessee. <laughs> it Back at you. Great. You've got quite an accent yourself. <laughs> well, I'm told I sound like James. I'm told I sound like James Bond. But, you know, I'll leave that. I'll leave that. <laughs> out there for other people's opinions. Anyway, it's been a great time with you. Um, so thank you again, Margaret. And I'd also like to say a big thank you to you, the listener. Where would we be without you? Thank you for joining us on this very insightful and what I can only describe as a very informative conversation. And I'm sure we've only touched the tip of the iceberg with Margaret's experience. Don't forget... She's the family law attorney in Knoxville, Tennessee. Remember her name? It was Margaret Held. Make sure to check her out. Give her a call. Send her that email. I'm certainly going to be in a good place to get started. So again, my name is Stuart Andrew Alexander, and we'll be back shortly with some more leading divorce professionals in this, our series of Let's Talk Divorce Conversations. So until then... Take care, have a great day, and we'll talk real soon. Thank you for tuning in to Impact Makers Radio. To listen to all past, present, and future industry thought leaders and trendsetters, visit us at impactmakersradio.com.